So there's three goals to my project. The first one is to assist in the making of the underwater sensors. And the next two are experimental testing and computer modeling devices and process the uh, Some background on the device. It's an underwater sound source. It's meant to be towed in an open ocean by a small boat. And it's designed to emit sound to simulate a large ship passing by so sound sensitive water might be detonated in response. This is what it's going to look like. A uh, typical ship, large ship, produces um, a few six inches, similar to this. You can see that in 20 periods we have about 170 decibels, and this is real data taken behind some ship testing. So, more on this device, this is roughly what it looks like. This is the actual picture. It's a it's about 80 and a half meters long by 37 meters in diameter. And so, if you want to connect the device, there is a submersible motor right here that spins a shaft and the shaft links to these six panels through a can connection that we expand to the sound. So more testing on these device. The sound frequency is 20 to 30 hertz, somewhere in that range. The corresponding wavelength is 50 to 75 meters. So to get the design acoustic performance, you really want to be testing in a large body of water. How are like going to pond or lake? That type of testing is expensive and it wouldn't make sense since the code has changed rapidly. Uh, however, there is a water tank available at the end of testing. Uh, this is the water tank that's in our lab. It's uh, three and a half meters in diameter by two meters tall. This is the actual picture you can see. It's uh, surrounded with uh, wooden walls that are held together by these uh, steel rings. So the dimensions are much smaller than the wavelength of the unit and sound wave. Uh, so, very, so you would not get the same performance that you design for in this tank because of the various reflections on the surface of the wall. Uh, our submerging device will still create some sort of pressure distribution. Uh, you can model that in theory using a uh, finite element software. And if you come close enough to the experimental values of the thing, you can try to extend the model to predict the performance of the ocean. Right? So this is the overview of the testing model process. We take our experimental conditions and from the computer model, which we compare to the experimental data and refine it as needed. And based on that, uh, we can measure the performance condition. So some acoustic theory. The first order approximation for this device is the remarkable source is this sphere um, expanding sinusoidally within the within fluid uh, within the spherical model. Uh, so for typical uh, parameters we find here, such as inner radius, outer radius, uh, the velocity of the expansion and frequency, density of the fluid, we can analytically solve for the pressure distribution and the speed. Now we go through details, but this is the this is the solution. It depends on the frequency of the uh, oscillation and the amplitude of the expansion. Uh, this so this is important because this allows us to check analytically for, for this model source which we So more the way we test this is we put it we submerge into the tank, which is pre mapped is shown here to only to have a consistent basis for measuring distances and it's not really the science. And a kind of phone is placed into the tank and it's used to collect the sound view. An accelerometer is mounted on the device to work the motion. Uh, during each test, hydrophone locations vary uh, systematically and uh, mandate first level of measurement uh, The setup, the cover set up for this, we have a hydrophone in the water that's connected to a preamplifier. And on the other side, we have accelerometers around the device and they're connected to a suppressive circuit that, uh, that goes into the computer and, and uh, as that's collected, we use lab and that lab to go uh, the accelerometers are pictured here. Uh, they're completely submersible and we're within the frequency operating range right here. They do require a constant current of 4 milliamps at 20 volts DC and they output a constant DC bias. That bias point is higher than the input that the data acquisition will can take. So to power the accelerometers, read the signal and filter the DC component out of both this uh, circuit here and that's the circuit. Or once to collect the data, it will be simply 
10 seconds of passing codes, and that provides the following frequency time resolutions. And we obtain one, this would have a telephone channel and four is our channels. Then MATLAB is used to compute the spectra for acceleration, for amplitude and phase, and the spectra can be used to power. So typical results. Here we have we mounted accelerometers on the device to show the button here. It has a label. And this is the device running in here. You can see, so the two accelerometers put the camera, the first two are on one hand, and the other two are next to You can see this data is much lower than that. That does not that is not a bad signal, it just means that it turned out that it means that the panel that these are mounted on is moving, it's a little looser than the other. So there's other modes of vibration. You can see the phase of the end of the acceleration button on the bottom. So at the frequency of interest, which is this type of 24 hertz, we can compare the type of phases for each plane. So you can see that there are roughly phases where there are some individual differences. So this, the point of this type of testing here is to provide feedback on the camera design. Uh, we were able to find out that a certain, a certain panel moves out of phase with the other one, uh, with some of the other ones, or that one of the cams is much worse in producing um, synchronous motion. So, so before even salamis were set up, we obtained some, a lot of acoustic data, so here's a sample of some. This is the, these uh, polar plots are not typical polar plots. Each circle represents a constant distance between the source, uh, the kind of the center point somewhere, and the hydrophone. The polar angles and the angles as usual, but the radial lines and the constant decibel lines. So the inner circle is a high decibel, the other is 200 decibels. Uh, you can see that the device is near less complicated. Uh, many of these indicate that. Uh, different names do not actually be called that So typical um, acceleration results for, for for testing the water. You can see that a lot of these the, the data is much cleaner because a lot of water gets a mixture of water on the device, so a lot of the vibrations can't be done. Uh, the frequency of interest is actually this first spike in the same harmonic. And you can see the phase again on the plot. Uh, so some typical acoustic data. This this set of data actually corresponds to the acceleration test we just saw. Uh, you can see the same spike, the same frequency as the acceleration spike. You can see the acoustic spike of the high point by decibel. This is obtained from the time data, pressure versus time. And uh, this data is also being broken up into one third of the uh, power bands, which is just frequency bands. That's really important. So moving on, on to modeling. Using, using console and multi physics, we can solve the time harmonic uh, counterpoints equation, which is shown above, uh, for the geometry and the boundary conditions of the problem. Uh, first, to validate the use of the software, I try to model the analytical solution to the sphere, uh, expanding within the sphere, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, using the console and the analytical plot two side by side and you can see the agree so the use of software can be there for that one. Now using now the model can be extended to the geometry problem. Uh, using the acceleration data that you saw two slides ago, uh, you can build this pan, this uh, this model, you can see these panels. Uh, each panel broken up into two parts, one part of the on there. And the normal acceleration condition can be imposed on each of those parts. So this is the pressure distribution that this device would have made at 22 hertz at steady state. So comparing theory to experiment, um, you can see the solid blue line is the result of the previous simulation the test. The circle here is the one data point that was obtained for that case. You can see that they agree with it to the value of five decimals. Um, unfortunately, that's as much agreement as I have so far. That's part of the reason is that the device never operated long enough to uh, conduct more data, more tests. Um, so, but that does not prevent the model. So, to compare the 